the Gospel of John. So if you turn to chapter 17 with me, please. Chapter 17, uh, we're going to be looking at verses 17 through 19. I will begin in verse 14. Please rise as we humble ourselves before the living Word of God. John 17, verses 14 through 19. And those are 17 through 19 there. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Father, we come to hear the truth, to rejoice in it, and we ask that you prepare our hearts as we come to your table. And we rejoice in you, our Savior and Lord, our King, Jesus Christ. We praise you, Father, in his name. Amen. Please be seated. Last week we were reminded that we are not of the world. We're not of the world, just as our Lord wasn't of the world. And that we are hated also because he gave us his word. And the world will hate us for that because we have his word and because he has commanded us to proclaim it. We are commissioned to declare all of his word. And after the Lord prayed for us to remember that we are not of the world, he asked his father to sanctify his disciples, to sanctify us. Sanctify them by your truth, he prayed. Your word is truth, he said to his father. Your word is truth, meaning all of the Old Testament scriptures and all that he had uh, spoken to his disciples. Now sanctify means set apart. The Lord prayed that we would be kept from evil in verse 15 of this uh, prayer. So sanctified and set apart, set apart from evil, but also that we would be made good. We'd be set apart for good, for righteousness, that we would grow in righteousness and that we'd grow in godliness. His will is that we would be made holy, like him, set apart for him. First Thessalonians 4 verse 3 makes it very clear, for this is the will of God, your sanctification. J.C. Rowell commented about the Lord's request here, and he said, maybe the prayer went, uh, or the meaning is something like this. Father, separate them more and more from sin by making them more pure, more spiritually minded, and more like yourself. The disciples were sanctified in that they were uh, set apart. They were not of the world. They were taken out of the world, and uh, they had been set apart. So they were distinct from people who had not uh, who do not and will not obey the Lord and his precious word. And so they were hated, and we are hated, or we will be hated, because we are set apart from the world to know and to serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord is praying that his Father would continue to conform us uh, to his image. Matthew Henry said it this way, Father, he's saying again, this is maybe the meaning of how it should come forward. Complete it, Father, Crown it with the perfection of holiness. Sanctify them throughout and to the end. In other words, through all, of we, all that we are and to the end of our lives. And this is done as the Holy Spirit takes uh, his written word and he conforms it, us to it. We are being conformed to the word. Praise God. And his word is truth. And the more we are distanced from this precious word, this word of truth, the more we will think and the more we will probably act like the world. May it not be so here. Matthew Henry said also, divine revelation, as it now stands in the written word, is not only pure truth without mixture, but entire truth without deficiency. Pure truth without mixture. Totally pure. Entire truth. It's not deficient in any way. The Shorter Catechism defines sanctification this way. Sanctification is the work of God's free grace. So is justification. It is the work of God's free grace. Sanctification is another uh, blessing of God's free grace. 
And it says, whereby we are renewed in the whole man after the image of God and are enabled more and more to die to sin and to live to righteousness. Our Lord wants to present us, dear family, to his Father as sanctified by him. And again, J.C. Ryle said, holy living trains Christians for heaven. Holy living trains Christians for heaven. And he went on, he said, Christ's blood alone can give us a title to enter heaven, that is justification. Sanctification will give us a capacity to enjoy it. Rejoice, he is preparing us to enjoy it to the fullest. Our justification was accomplished by our Lord Jesus for us on the cross in his death. Sanctification is an inward work by the Holy Spirit, an ongoing work of the Spirit. Our Lord loves us. And so he asked his Father that we might be more sanctified. And the instrument of that sanctification is the Word of God. So the Lord essentially is also praying at the same time that we would become people of the Word. So we should pray for that. We should pray uh, for sanctifying grace. We should praise God for his sanctifying grace. Part of that is as we come to the table. We, we know that and we rejoice in it. And I would add, and praise God that I know that you are praying for your elders and your officers. Please continue to pray for your elders and deacons that we would be sanctified as we have been set apart in a way to serve and we must go forward in the power of the Holy Spirit. We must not do this in the flesh. And then in verse 18, the Lord Jesus addressed his father and his disciples heard this, of course. They were there and they knew he was asking this for them and preparing them. And he said, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And two weeks ago, we looked at John, uh, in John chapter 20, verse 21, as the father has sent me, I also send you. So the Lord asked that the Father would sanctify his disciples because of the enormity of their task. Go reach the world. And he desires us also to be sanctified because of the task that we are given. We too are sent to proclaim him. And that is carried out, it turns out, effectively anyway, by saints who are being sanctified. As the Father has sent his Son to be uh, a messenger, so the Lord prayed that we would be sent as his messengers, as consecrated people set apart for a holy mission. We have a holy mission, as holy witnesses set apart for our holy Lord. And then in verse 19, the Lord said, and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. The Father sanctified Jesus when he sent him into the world. He set him apart the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit actually did in John 10, 36. He was sent as a mediator and he was entirely devoted to finishing what he had begun, what he was sent to do. He did not need to be sanctified in holiness, but he was set apart. He again, he is again praying to his Father that his own, his people, his disciples would be sanctified and would complete their task. He was now going to offer up himself as a sacrifice for his people He completed what he came to teach, and he completed what he came to do. Hebrews 10.10 says, We have been been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Praise God. We're sanctified by him. Ephesians 5.26, you all know this as when you go to weddings mostly, you've all heard this. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Our Lord Jesus loves his people. He loves his church, and he gave himself for her to sanctify us and to cleanse us with the washing of water by the word. The Lord as our high priest was set apart for his work in this, and he came and he taught and now was to be sacrificed here in this, right after this prayer. He was to be sacrificed for his own Titus 2.14 says, He gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works. Praise God. We are sanctified. He's redeeming us from every lawless deed. He's purifying us and he calls us his special people and he's making us able 
more and more to be zealous for good works. First Peter 1 says, he himself bore our sins in his own body on the cross or on the tree that having died to sins, we might live for righteousness and by his stripes we are healed. So let's, brothers and sisters, as we come to this table and we see the elements, they remind us that he fulfilled the will of his father. His body was broken for us. He did shed his blood for us. And he gives sanctifying grace as we partake of this communion with him by faith in obedience. And praise God, then we will have the grace to fulfill this awesome commission that we have been given. Let's pray. Lord, we come as your special people. And we praise you, Lord, for purifying us and making us zealous for good works. We have no hope to do that otherwise. Lord, we praise you that you gave yourself to sanctify and to cleanse your church. Oh, Lord, make us more pure, more spiritually minded, and more like yourself. Lord, we come now seeking you and your grace to carry out this commission that you have given to us. And we rejoice in your loving work of sanctification in our lives through your precious word. And we praise you in the name of our mediator and our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.